Hi, my name's Caroline, and I'm a hobbyist seamstress. Welcome back to my channel. So, um, in the previous video, I have the mock-up and, like, design of my Lucy from Dracula dress. So now I'm going to take that mock-up and cut out the actual fabric. And the fabric I got for $2 a yard in a discount bin in, in a store that I like to go to. Um... I thought it looked like kind of cheap, but actually the end result, it looked pretty good, I thought, so I'm happy with it. And I'm just cutting out um, the new, the fabric based on the um, alterations I made in the mock-up, which I talked about in the mock-up video. So if you want to check that out, you can. And I'm using just a really thin, like, cotton for the um, lining, so... I'm cutting that out as well. Okay, so I also um, marked off where I like put the darts on the mock-up. Um, and I'm just making those um, marks on the new material um, where they should be. Just taking this to the sewing machine and sewing down the darts. Um, so I was... In the book, Patterns of Fashion, it says to flatline it. I didn't end up doing that because I thought I would save myself some time because I was on a time crunch. Um, I made this in exactly like two weeks, this whole dress. Um, so, but there you can see the, um, you know, bodice. It looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add the um, lace. <laughs> So I was like kind of deciding what I wanted for it. Did I want like the whole thing to sort of, what did I want? And in the end I chose like this, this part of the lace where it kind of looks like it's like dripping a little bit. So I decided to cut that part out and then I sewed that down with, with a sewing machine. And then I also wanted to add some like decorative stitching with the sewing machine that kind of looked like drip. So I just did a lot of practice ones on my pa practice pat pattern because my sewing machine does do a lot of different kind of stitches and I found some that I liked so I added those on the sewing machine as well so you can see there the like drips quote unquote um I thought it looked pretty good now I'm going to add in the like actual drops of blood with um the embroidery thread and I'm doing this based off, you know, um, a design I saw at the camp exhibit um, based on the shining dresses. And what I did was I just put um, lace through some embroidery thread and I added a little gem. These um, were, the gems were just like little tiny beads that look like teardrops. Okay, so I got that at a bead store. And I just put um, put it through and then tied it off on the other side. And this is another reason why I didn't flatline it. I was like, do I want this on the other side? But it turns out I probably should have flatlined it. But in retrospect, that's what I should have done. But what can I do? So there's like all the gems I added to it. Um, just like see how they're little dangling. They made them all different lengths. So from far away, it looks like something really bloody. But then, you know, when you go up close, it's actually, um, you know, these gemstones. So I like the idea of that, that you know, um, y you can't really tell what it is. And then you go up close and it's not actually blood. I think it's fun. So now I'm just attaching the back two pieces um, to the front, like, bodice part, um, and I made the back part really, really long, because I wasn't sure I wanted to do the closure, I thought maybe I would want to, like, fold it, maybe, but I ended up not doing that at the end, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I wasn't sure if I wanted to, like, fold it and have, like, a billowy back thing, but it didn't look good at the end, so I just decided not to. So there is the bodice, part it's like kind of half done and then I see I have all this fabric I was going to like bunch it up maybe and big it the thing I really hate is doing like back closures like I just it's like the bane of my existence so 
I was like, well, what way can I hide it? So, like, it doesn't look as bad. <laughs> like, maybe if I add a whole roll of fabric over top of it, then it will hide it. <laughs> like, But, you know, in the end, it turned out okay. <laughs> so... So now I, um, I'm going to do the collar and I want like a little bit of blood to be hanging off the collar. So what I did was I sewed the lining and the collar and a little bit of blood. Well, it's lace, but I sewed it. So then when you, when I, you know, turn it right side out or whatever, the little bit of blood is sort of dripping off the collar. Cause I wanted like a little bit on the collar and then like the main, um, blood or whatever to be on the um dress and now what i'm doing is i'm just ironing out all my seams on the bodice so i can start on the um start on the lining where i'm gonna add all the boning and here i'm just adding the collar so, um, you know, I just pin it in place and then I go to the sewing machine and stitch it together. Okay, so I'm starting on the um, lining here. And there was a few different um, pieces in the lining as opposed to the bodice outer part. And this is based off, you know, the patterns of fashion books. So essentially I've, there's like a middle seam and they want me to put boning in the middle seam. And this would have actually been done in the dress or in the bodice. It should have been like flat line, but I didn't do that because I was like trying to save time. And, and really I should have just done that because it, I feel like it would have looked better at the end anyway. But I thought this would save me time because I was on a a bit of a time crunch but um that's what I did so then I just ironed it out and um I started to add the boning channels and there's one more seam that should have been there that I didn't include which I added um later on so all these boning channels are based on the patterns of fashion book so um you know, I just looked in the book where they put the boning channels and that's where I added them. And I got like this ribbon. I've seen like people use this kind of ribbon. I'm not sure even what type. Um, and I just went to the sewing machine and sewed the boning channels just straight into the um, bodice. Like, or into the lining. Well, that, that's where I thought I could save time because if I didn't do that, then I would have had to hand sew each boning channel in and I was just really crunched on time. So I was like, well, I didn't know if I would have time. So I ended up doing that. So once they were all like sewn in by the sewing machine, I just started adding the um, boning and the boning I used is a one fourth inch, but from the um, book, it was saying that it was an in a half inch. So I just put two right next to each other. And I put like a little bit of tape just to make them kind of stand next to each other. And like, I hope that worked. I mean, it worked in the end, but like, I just didn't have any like half inch boning. And I didn't really have time to like go out, buy some. So that's what I did. And then I filled up all the boning channels. So once that was done, I um, added, I'm not sure what you call it, like the ribbon that they put around the center 
to like kind of hold it in place at the waist not sure what that's called but um this is like a special kind of boning where you can just sew right through it it's like a plastic type of boning so i was like so i just took it to the sewing machine and i sewed like little x's where um it would be like and normally this would be like hand done but i was just really crunched for time so um i was trying to finish it for this new york public library costume contest so um that's what i was trying to finish it for so once I finished, you know, putting the boning in, putting that little extra thing, like the inside lining was basically done. I just added it to the outer bodice by lining it up like with the collar. There's like a like a little extra. Um, you can see when I flip it over easier, but I basically put it on the seam allowance of the collar and then I just flipped it over so you really couldn't tell. So yeah, then it was done. The um but I feel like it would have been better if I would have just flatlined it because in the end it was kind of hard to like get it to lay flat when I was trying to do like the closure in the back. And I don't know, I just feel like it would have been better, but <laughs> and it would like actually look better too, but meh, whatever. <laughs> okay, so I just tried it on and I added a little padding like in the bust because I've seen in some pictures that they've added this padding um, and I wanted to fill out a little bit more so it looks pretty good um, the look of it so then I decided to move on um, to the sleeves so for the sleeves I always I cut them out you know based on the mock-up and I always lay them out like this so I can make sure I have two sleeves that are going to be like for the different sides because before I've made stuff and <laughs> it's not the right size or it's both for the same side and then you're like, I'm, like kicking myself I have to like undo the whole thing and it's really annoying so I just always do it this way and there's a part in the patterns of fashion book where you gather a little bit of the elbow on the the um heavier part so you can see right there that I did that and then I just sewed the whole thing like I um you know pinned the whole thing and sewed it so now i have the um sleeve and i just want to make sure it was good i wanted it to be long i wasn't sure how long but here i'm kind of adjusting the length um so yeah it fits pretty good it goes up to the armpit good everything like that so i decided to move on to the um puffed part of the sleeve Okay, so you can kind of see like what it looks like on the inside. I actually thought these sleeves fit really nicely, so. Okay, so now what I, what I did, I, um, I undid, or I snipped off that front part that I thought was a bit long, like I just did the length when I had it on. And then I am seam ripping out one side of the sleeve. Like after I made sure it fit, I'm seam ripping out down to the part where it's bunched right above the elbow. Cause like in the patterns of fashion book, it says this is where you're supposed to sew the new sleeve. And the only way I figured that I could do this was to, um, sew it this way that I did, um, to make the big puffs. Okay. So in the patterns of fashion book, there is a um, little extra piece with the sleeve, so I added that. And then it said in the book to add paper, so to the sleeve, so I'm assuming I like tissue paper. I wasn't really sure. So I just um, decided to sew the tissue paper to the bottom and I just put really, really big stitches with the sewing machine so I could gather the whole thing like when I got back because it has to be all gathered. So and it specifies in the book, like, the parts that gathered and not. So, I gathered it all down. So, it was, like, a big puffy bunch at that point. And it looks really cool. Like, it really worked. <laughs> and then I just, um, ironed out the sleeve so I could get ready to, like, attach it attach the like bunched part 
yeah. So then um, I made a mark on the sleeve. And this is according to the Patterns of Fashion book. Like where I wanted to attach the puffy part of the sleeve. And then I just, you know, started pinning it. And then I went to the sewing machine and I just sewed it on. So now you can see it's like a big puff at the bottom. It's attached. And then now I have to do the top part of the puff. And I still have that bit open from before. So I pin in place um, the top part, and I do the same exact thing that I did to the bottom part. So I, um, you know, made really loose stitches, and I um, gathered it all in a big gather. So it looked the same, the same, like, um, puffy stitches. Okay, so now that I gathered it <clears throat> with the sewing machine... Um, I'm like with my fingers, I'm attaching it to the top of the um, sleeve. So um, I'm just pinning it into place and then I'm just taking it to the sewing machine and um, sewing it on the very top. But I still have that part on the side open. And um, also, I pulled back the little. Um, I, I made sure go when, I, when I went on the sewing machine that I wasn't like. I was stitching it all so it looked like gathered right. I'm not sure how to explain that well, but um, just because these are such close gathers that I didn't want it to look like overlapped or something. And then to finish the um, sleeve, because that like kind of middle part is still open, I just turned it inside out and I just finished off the seam um, where I have it open. So now the sleeve is done with the puff. So you can see the sleeves. Uh, you can, I'm really excited about them because they're so puffy and big. I mean, it really worked well with the um, paper. Probably would have done more paper or something. Um, next time we do it, it kind of got a little limp when I actually wore it out. But it looks really cool here. So I think it looks really nice. Next, I have to make the, um, I wanted to make, you know, the bottom of the sleeve to look like dripping blood. So I kind of was deciding what I wanted to use for the, um, you know, sleeve. And I decided to just cut out this one part that looked like maybe dripping blood to me. And I, I cut out really closely um, the, the, you know, design because I thought that would look kind of cool um, if I had that. And then I just hand stitched this onto the sleeve. I still don't have the lining for the sleeve. And I did it, you know, in two different places on the garment because I wanted it to look a little different on each side. Um, but I think it looks like, you know, her hand was drenched in blood or something. So I think it looks pretty cool. And then I just cut off, you know, the extra on the bottom of the um, sleeve so it would be the right length. So here I have the um, lining. I did it the exact same way that, um, and this is just a thin cotton. Um, I did it the exact same way that I did the um, sleeves. And I'm just putting it into the um, sleeve right now. And I'm gonna pull that up to, to finish the beadwork. But um, that's how I did it. And I'm going to just attach it to the very top where it lines up with the seams. So now I have like a nice finish sleeve. So.
Yeah, this so this so I sewed the seam. So now um, it's done. I have to just uh, cut off that like edge part um, to make it even, and um, I'm gonna finish the beadwork. And now I'm gonna start adding um, the you know drips of blood, just like I did for the top of the garment. You know, um, I'm going to add the um, drips of blood with the embroidery thread and um, teardrop um, jewels. So I did this the exact same way that I did the, um, you know, bodice, which was, um, you know, with the embroidery thread and everything. And I did it in just very varying areas. Um, I just added a bunch of thread and then I added on the beads that I saw fit. And then another thing I did was I just, um, because I kind of wanted more to be like directly onto it, so I just took some embroidery thread and I just um, stitched some of the beads like closer to it. And I went back and did that to the um, bodice as well because um, I kind of like how it looked, so. Um, so once I finished adding all the gems that I wanted to on both sides, um, I added a bias tape, a red bias tape, just to finish the edge. Um, and I, you know, pulled down the lining so the lining is now, like, even with it, and I added this bias tape in kind of the same color as the blood. And I just, um, I stitched it on the sewing machine on the one side of the bias tape, so it wouldn't show, and then I hand stitched on the inside, and the part you wouldn't see. And now I'm going to add the lace um, <clears throat> that I wanted, like the inside of the sleeve, so it looks like it's like dripping blood. And um, I just did this by cutting up out two layers of it. I wanted it to be layered, and then I um, just hand stitched it in inside of the uh, lining of the uh, sleeve. So that is the completed sleeve. All right, so now I have to move on to actually completing the um, bodice back. And this is where I decided, all right, I'm just going to um, make it. There, there was a few dresses before this one that I picked that it had a back closure like this with these tiny um you know eyelet things or whatever and I can at the fabric store they have um I live in New York City so there's a really big garment district and they have this store that's just all like notions and they have these things that are just um pre-done like uh closure I feel like I'm really bad at describing everything. Pre-done, like, closure things. So it's just a big line of these um, pre-done things. So it makes it really convenient. So I bought this, you know, thinking I would use it. Um, and it turns out that I can't get it on myself. <laughs> 
So you know, I tried and I tried. Like, I, I just can't, you know, close it. Like, I guess this they would have had a maid, you know. Most of the dresses are front closures. And I realize why now. Because if you're by yourself, which I am, uh, you can't really close the dress. So I couldn't even really see if it fit. <laughs> so... I just bit the bullet. I was like, well, I guess I'll have to put a zipper in. But in the end, it, you can't really even tell it's a zipper because, you know, the way I did it. But, um, so I just ended up getting a zipper and, um, doing like a middle seam. So, um, yeah, wish I could close it myself, but, um, no. <laughs> Next dress I'll do, I'll do a front closure. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that, but, um, anybody else have that problem? <laughs> they can't close it <laughs> I wish I had a maid for just that but you know um so here's the finished um actual zipper Let's see. all right so there's the finished zipper um and I I just hand stitched this in to make sure it would look nice you know so yeah that was a uh, my annoying you should have seen me getting so frustrated i was like crying i was like ah, i can't sit button it <laughs> anyway so now that i know it fits i tried it on everything i um went to the front and i just i'm gonna finish off those edges so i cut off you know kind of was like a wonky cut that i did and i wanted to make it a little more even in the patterns of fashion book it's more like it comes to more like a point but I guess I messed up something along the way. Um, cause I, I was I was adjusting the pattern, so it, was, it didn't come out just like it. So I, um, you know, just cut off those extra edges. And another thing I did was I added padding to the inside of the um, bodice because I wanted that like Victorian shape more. And you know, I saw in some things that they would add the add this padding but I don't think I really did it right because in, in the end like when I wore it like I actually wore it it kind of looked funky but um like before I wore it and like wore it around and sweated in it you know it looked good but, like for the wear test I don't know if it actually worked um I'm gonna show some pictures at the end when I wore it to the New York Public Library event and everything um so yeah I think I'll probably research a little more how to do that better, how to add the padding. So um, I'm going to do that in the future. Um, and then I just stitched it into place. But, you know, I, I stitched it in between the two layers, thinking it would be better. But now I really can't adjust it, which, like, I should have just stitched it on the inside with the lining, like... Well, because I saw some pictures and it kind of like was, it wasn't done that way. It was kind of in, it seemed in the lining. Um, so, but mm, I think it looked pretty good. You know, it didn't look perfect, but, you know, at first it looked really good, but I think this sweat and stuff just, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I just hand stitched this inside the actual um, lining so you can't see it from the inside, but. So, once I finished that, I, um, wanted to do the, finish off the edges, and what I did was I, I got this ribbon, um, I'm not sure what this ribbon is called, but they seem to use it a lot. It's like this ribbed sort of, kind of reminds me of that silk fay material, but I, I don't think it's silk, but anyway. And I just, just, you know, covered the edges and, um hand sewed this down so the bodice is essentially done at this point
And now I'm going to move on to the skirt. Yeah, the bodice looks pretty nice. I was happy with it. So in the end, I added a few um, hooks and things to hook to the skirt. But So here I am cutting out the skirt. And in the Patterns of Fashion book, it says to line it. But I didn't have enough material. That was... Um, I thought I did, but I didn't. And I just ran out of time. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just French seam it all and hope for the best. <laughs> um... Um, I think it turned out fine because like my petticoat, you, so you can't really see anything. My petticoat's pretty good. Um, so, you know. Now the nice thing about this, um, and I learned this from the Bernadette Banner video of making a um, skirt, making a um, walking skirt. The way it's cut is the straight part of the skirt is on the straight grain and the the other part is on the bias so every panel is sort of stuck to a non to a straight grain so it's not gonna uh stretch or anything and if you know that you can keep you can easier like say you didn't know which panel number it was well you're not gonna get really confused because you're like well this is the straight grain so this one obviously goes to the kind of bias cut part so I'm doing saying like it was easier it was easier for me to like put the skirt together like whereas when I put the when I did the um mock up I was really confused like which one is it like which side but you know after watching that video um it was kind of easier for me to see that so essentially I just French seamed every panel um except the left back side because that's where I'm putting the placket in and how you do a French seam is you put the, the material right side to right side. And, um, not right side to right side. Uh, like the two right sides are showing. So the seam is like showing on, on the right side of the garment. So it seems counterintuitive. And you sew it with a very small seam allowance. Then you cut off the extra seam allowance and you press that seam the other way and then you sew um encasing that seam so then i have a nice closed seam um without you know the hems aren't showing or anything like that which is nice for this material because this material really frays um so yeah so i did that with every single panel um, except the back side because that's where I'm supposed to add the placket. And also I was supposed to add a pocket and it seems like blasphemous or something for me not to add pockets to 18th century dresses. But honestly, I just didn't have time. I mean, the pocket would have come in actually really handy because I had to carry around this little like bag the whole time. I was at the, the library thing because nobody went with me. So I had to carry around this like little bag for my phone and stuff. So um, that was inconvenient. And I would have done well with a pocket, but I just didn't have time to do it. Like, I was in such a time crunch. Like, I had, like, three days to finish this whole skirt. Like, I was, like, freaking out. So, um, I didn't end up doing that, but... So, according to the Patterns of Fashion book, um, the back four panels are supposed to be, um... Uh, what's it called? They're supposed to be... Bunched up, gathered, gathered. This was to be gathered to approximately four inches um, in the back. So after I French seamed the whole thing, so basically it was just a big long piece except for the back left part. And you can see in the pattern fashion where they added the pocket. Um, I gathered the the back four panels, so it would be. And I did this on the sewing machine by just um, making a really big stitch. And then I gathered it, hand gathered it, and um, got it into like a four inch amount. So once I did that, I have, I, it was time to add the, um, what's it called? The placket? The placket? You know, I, I got really, I get really freaked out about closures. Like I'm like, ah, closure! <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Um, so, 
I, you know, the thing about the Patterns of Fashion book is that it doesn't really show things you want to see sometimes. Like, I kind of wanted to see the placket and, like, where it was, but it really wasn't showing me. So I found this random, um, like, blog or something. So I'm going to link that below um, that has, like, a better description of a placket. But, or, like, showed some pictures. But essentially, um, what it was, what I did was I made two, and this, in the Patterns of Fashion book, it has, um, you know, the pattern of the placket. So it was two, um, nine by, like, two inch, um, strips. And essentially, I just folded them in half, and then, and, like, the raw edges are showing and stuff, but I really... I didn't know how to not really make them show because, um, I don't know. I'm not that good at plaquettes, so. Um, essentially I just made these two 9 by 2 inch and folded it over. Um, so you can see me, like, folding it over. And I just sewed, you know, it together basically so I have two like matching little nine by two inch strips and then I attached um I went to sewing machine and just sewed it up and I attached on one side um of the skirt so the one side that's not gathered I attached it so it would be like popping out um of the skirt You know, and then um, and and I and I didn't have a way to finish this seam, so this seam has left unfinished for me. If I would have added a lining, it would be finished and it would look much neater. But I just ran out of time, and um, the next thing I make, I'm gonna spend a little more time on it. But yeah, um, since I had to make the whole corset for it, I really just didn't have the time. So essentially, I just added it on the edge so it's kind of facing out and then for the other side that is um, bunched up I put it on the inside so and from the pictures this is what they did so I have one sort of that's going to stick out and the other one that's sort of sticking in um, and then I just Went to the sewing machine, uh, uh, sewed, sewed those two things down, and then, um, according to this other blog I found, so I added the other placket on like the other side on the inner part, and then you can see here I'm just um, sewing them together um, at the bottom, um, kind of like you would do a zipper. And uh, then I'm just finishing that seam. I mean, it's not, not finished, but I'm just going down the whole seam. So now the skirt is closed. So um, the like placket part is done for right now. Okay, so now I, um, you know, I finished the placket. So I'm moving on to finishing off the the, the top part of the. Um, um, what's it called? Skirt. And I just created some bias tape. I wanted like about an inch or so um, for the top of the skirt. And I just created some bias tape and I added it to the top of the skirt to finish off the top. So, um, and how I do that is I just went on the sewing machine, like you would add bias tape, went on the sewing machine on the inside, and then I'm able to fold it over, and then I'm, I hand stitched, you know, the inside, so you can't really see that, um, you know, I, uh, stitched this into place. Then I added the, um, hooks. I just used some, like, heavy-duty dress hooks, and I added two for the inside of the, um, skirt. Um, and then I added one, another one where the placket was inside, and, and it held up pretty well, so I would suggest doing that as well. 
So now I'm moving on to the hem. And what I did to get the placement of it was I, I'm lucky enough to have a dress form that I bought a while ago. So I just make it my height. And then I'm able to um, kind of pin where I need to hem. And then I fold it in, like I double fold it in, um, iron it, and then I just hand sew the hem. So that's how I'm able to get it um, a good length. And I made this um, basically a little longer than ankle length because, you know, I wanted it long enough where it appears, um, you know, to the floor, but I also didn't want to trip over it either. So, um, yeah, it was really fun to walk around in it, but, um, so essentially I just, um, I just finished the hem, um, all the way around and then the skirt is essentially done. So, um, yeah, there's the skirt. It looks nice. Um, I like how it turned out. Um, I wish I had time to do a lining, but what can you do? And then I ended up adding a few, um, cause when I tried it on, it was kind of not staying together. So I, um, added a few more hooks, um, in the front and in the back. And then I, I made this belt, but actually I didn't like how it looked. So I'm not going to include how I made it. Like it, it didn't lay right, but I did wear it for the costume contest. But um, I ended up just making this sash instead, which I think looks better and like kind of falls nicer. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. The belt just didn't, it didn't uh, look right to me. I think I messed it up somehow, but um, the sash looks pretty nice. So there's the sash, then here's the completed dress. I think it looks really nice, and here's um, some pictures of me at the New York Public Li Library event wearing the costume. I had asked uh, random people to sort of take pictures of me because I went for myself, so. Um, and you can see how the padding didn't look exactly right, but um, it looked pretty good, and I got a lot of, like, people really liked it. They took pictures with it. Um, they didn't necessarily know who I was right away, but um, once I told them, they knew um, that I was Lucy from Dracula. And then the public library event was this costume contest and Tim Gunn was a judge. So that was cool. So Tim Gunn from Project Runway came and judged my dress. He was really nice in real life. And I made it to the second round. I didn't make it any further. So the top 25 I made it to. Um, so that was pretty cool. And it was literary themed, you know. So everybody was in these like really fun outfits. Um, the person that won was like Fahrenheit 415 not one or yeah. I'm um and theirs looked really cool but um yeah it was really fun to wear it um yeah tim gunn was like oh did you make it yourself or whatever and I'm like, or who made it and i was like me like it was just really fun to like have tim gunn it was really surreal but it was really fun um and then you can see my makeup here i added like little jewels um for my like blood my like fake blood you know um, which I thought looked really cool. Um, it was really funny, like, walking to the subway. Um, because, like, everyone's, like, everyone, like, was looking, like, they liked it, but they didn't want to, like, make eye contact with me. Um, but I, I think they, like, enjoyed me wearing it. Um, and unfortunately, it was very hot, because, like, this is all polyester. So I was, like, dying by the end of the night. So and I, I went to my friend's party, and I'm just goofing off, having fun. Um, before I, like, tore it off and, like, put on a t-shirt because it was really hot um, but it was a lot of fun I really enjoyed it so um I'd really love to hear about your guys's fun creations of Halloween um so thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video in any way please consider subscribing and supporting me on my patreon thank you so much